This is Brian Jakovich, and welcome to Skeleton Screencasts. In the previous episode, I went into detail about how to use Chef to script the installation of Tomcat and Chef Solo. Today, I'm going to take it a step further and pair CloudFormation with Chef in a more advanced way. In today's screencast, we are going to use Hosted Chef and Chef Client to install Tomcat and Jenkins on our EC2 instance. As I mentioned in the previous screencast, you can use Chef in three different ways. Chef Solo, Chef Server, and Hosted Chef. Hosted Chef and Chef Server are similar. They only differentiate in who hosts the server account. In Hosted Chef, Opscode takes care of all the heavy lifting. They host and manage the master server for you so you don't have to. With a Chef Server account, it's all on you. You need to host it, manage it, etc. I have worked with both extensively and my preference is to let Opscode deal with operations with the Chef Server and I'll just write the Chef code to provision my systems. There are a few prerequisites to the screencast which I have taken for granted. I'm going to assume that you have created a Hosted Chef account like I'm showing here and have configured your local system to use Knife to connect to it. If you have not done this, I recommend you check out Opscode's wiki for Knife. And that'd be docs.opscode.com slash knife slash or slash chef slash knife. This will help you get started. That being said, let's check out our hosted chef account. As you see at the top nav bar, there's a list of chef resources, cookbooks, roles, nodes, data bags. If you click on the cookbooks, you see that there aren't any cookbooks uploaded to our hosted chef account. Click roles, all you see is the base role, which is ops code, which ops code places there by default. Cast will be uploading two cookbooks that we created in last week's screencast, the Jenkins and Tomcat cookbooks. We'll then be creating a role and using CloudFormation to tie everything together by connecting the system to Hosechef so it can provision itself. Start off by uploading our cookbooks. Under my directory where I have nice life installed and then the cookbooks directory. Then the chef my chef repo, which is where my knife is configured, and then I'm just going to go into the cookbooks directory. And in here, I have my Jenkins and Tomcat cookbooks. To upload them, I simply just do knife cookbook upload star, and this will grab both of them. So that was simple and the easy part of this. Uh, next, we'll move on to our role, which will call both of our cookbooks for during the installation. So I'm going to go into my roles section that's inside my knife uh, area. I've already created the role, but we'll walk through it to understand what it's doing. This is going to look very similar to the run list we created in the previous screencast. As you see here, we're giving the role the name Jenkins and then classifying it as a chef role. Chef will then know what to do with it when it gets asked to, to use it. In setting the run list, on both the Tomcat and Jenkins cookbooks during the installation. So basically, if we were to tell Chef to build the system, and if we were to pass in this role, it will install both the Tomcat and Jenkins cookbooks. Yes, these cookbooks is it pulls them down from Hosted Chef. Basically, when we did the knife cookbook upload, we put them up in Hosted Chef, and then when this role is run by Chef Client, it will go and fetch the cookbooks, pull them down, and do the installation. Okay, so now that we have kind of an understanding of how the role or what the role is doing, let's upload it to Hosted Chef. So I'm in my role directory, so I'm just going to do knife role from file. And then Jenkins. There we go. We have a role. So that's it for Chef. There's not much more we need to do. We've put our cookbooks and our roles up there. And now we need to tie it all together with CloudFormation, which will connect up post to Chef and then do the installation. So let's take a deep dive through that. built out this template to connect to host chef, but let's, let's just walk through it. So first we need to grab the organization's validator key pair and store an Etsy chef. You can get this by going to the chef console, the hosted chef console, and clicking regenerate validator key when in the organization's view. 
This will create a private key and then download it to your local system. To get access to it in my CloudFormation script, I push the private key up and store it in S3. Since this file is sensitive, I'm using CloudFormation Authentication feature where I use IAM user's credentials to download the file. I'm going to go over IAM Authentication in a future screencast, but just know that by referencing the, the S3 creds listed right here, I get the credentials to download the file from S3. Otherwise, this file is only accessible uh, by the owner, so the, the account owner, and I wouldn't be able to pull it down otherwise. So next, I create the client RB file, which tells Chef Client where to get the cookbooks from. Here, I'm saying the Chef Server URL, and then I'm saying this to Ops Code Organization Stelligent because I'm using the Stelligent organization. If my organization was named example, I would just change Stelligent to example. And then I'm also referencing my Stelligent validator key so Chef can connect to the or the Chef client can connect to host as Chef. The validator key acts as an initial validation so that the host so that host Chef knows that the client uh, that's trying to connect to it is valid. Chef will then create a new client which will have its own private identity or private key identity. From then on, Chef Client will use the new client private key to authenticate to host a chef. So basically what happens is Chef will the Chef Client will call up to host a chef, say, okay, here's my validation key, and then it will create a new client on host a chef that it will access as part or as that system. So it creates something like let's, let's say EC2 user and that would be how that particular system talks to host chef. Lastly, I set up the run list, which is simply setting the role which will be used. As you remember, I created the Jenkins role in the using that role file. You can see here that I could have listed the Tomcat and Jenkins cookbooks in this run list, similar to how I did in the role. But the reason I didn't is if I needed to add another cookbook, it's much easier just to add to the role and have all the environments that have this particular role just grab from a centralized set. There are other few reasons for using roles as to specify the cookbooks directly, such as if you need attributes and also to put together logical sets of cookbooks to accomplish a goal. For instance, having a Tomcat and Jenkins cookbook in a role makes sense because it's creating a fully functioning Jenkins environment. Those are the two dependencies. Okay, now we've done all the configuration with Chef. The last thing to do is to have CloudFormation actually run Chef Client. We do this down in the instances user data. With the line Chef Client, and then we also use the J option to pass in the run list node JSON file created up, up above. Okay, well that's it. When I run this, Chef Client should, should run. It will grab all the files and credentials that we're setting up above up in the CloudFormation net section and then it should register to host a chef and create a Jenkins installation on top of Tomcat. Okay, so let's go ahead and run it. So the CloudFormation template completed, which means we should be able to go to the instance's public DNS, followed by port 8080 slash Jenkins, and it should come up. So if I go to EC2, perfect. Everything worked as expected. We ran the CloudFormation template, and we have a Jenkins environment that's all configured and ready to go. This method is a great way to bootstrap your environments with Chef. They are able to provision themselves in an automated fashion. And this approach is my preference when scripting environments because it gives you a lot of flexibility provisioning for provisioning your environments in a scripted manner. And in relation to AWS, it enables you to interact with your auto-scaling groups in a much better fashion. Let's say you have a web server or a web server auto-scaling group and three instances are running. And let's say they were already configured with Chef and 
and they have their web server and they are serving traffic. Then let's say one of the instances goes down and then auto scaling kicks in and replaces the instance. In this scenario, the instance would call up to host its chef, tell it what it needs based upon its role, and then it will provision and deploy to itself, leading to a self-healing infrastructure. So basically, your, inf your instance goes down and then it replaces it, and you're good as, good as new. So if you need any additional information, I suggest you check out the Chef Wiki at uh, wiki.opscode.com. And that will give you plenty of information on how Chef works and more in depth than the screencast is touched on. If you like the screencast and want to get updates when new ones are posted, hit the like button and then subscribe to our channel. And if you have any feedback or inquiries, please email, email us at info at Tweet me at the handle at Brian Jackovich or leave a comment in the YouTube.